We now know more about Pluto and its moons than ever before. The images that NASA's New Horizons spacecraft has sent back from Pluto are unlike anything we've ever seen before. New Horizons cameras have a resolution of about 250 to 280 meters per pixel, which means that the cameras can distinguish objects about the size of a small office building at a distance of a few hundred kilometers. So, what have we discovered? The first thing you might notice is that Pluto looks a lot like Jupiter's moon Io. It has smooth plains, mountains, and jagged, blocky structures called cantaloupe terrain that look similar to volcanoes on Earth. The smooth plains are likely made of nitrogen ice, while the jagged blocks could be made out of water ice or frozen methane. Because of its high altitude, it was difficult for New Horizons to take photos of these regions during its flyby. The spacecraft will be returning to this region in July 2020 after its encounter with Kuiper Belt object MU69, also known as Ultima Thule. In addition to taking close-up pictures and other measurements, at this time, New Horizons will also study Uranus's rings through several different instruments aboard the spacecraft. It's important to recognize that New Horizons is still over 4 million miles away from Pluto and is sending back photos that are about as good as photos taken from Earth of a basketball on the surface of the Moon. While these images are amazing to scientists who have been studying Pluto for decades, they're nothing like what we expected or hoped for when we sent New Horizons on its mission almost 10 years ago. In reality, these first pictures tell us very little about what's happening on Pluto since they don't show patterns or textures in any detail, they just give us an idea of how dark or light something might be. New Horizons is sending back photos at a rate of about one per minute but it will take weeks before we get enough data from those images to produce even basic maps showing where landmasses exist on this tiny dwarf planet. The resolution of an image is the ability to distinguish two close objects that are far apart. In this case, it depends on a several things, but the most important factors are the distance and size of the object. For example, if you have a telescope with a very large diameter lens and take an image from 1 million kilometer away, which is roughly 2% of Pluto's distance from Earth, then your camera will be able to resolve objects as small as 250 meters per pixel or less. However, if you move closer to Pluto, say just 100 kilometers above its surface, the cameras would only be able to resolve objects at about 280 meters pixel. The resolution is limited by many factors. The size of your camera sensor, how big your lens can get before diffraction starts making everything blurry, how big an aperture it takes before diffraction reduces its effectiveness, etc. Pluto's largest moon, Charon, is of particular interest to scientists. It was first discovered in 1978 and named after the ferryman who took souls across the river Styx. The chunk of ice floating in space is thought to have a subsurface ocean underneath its surface, a likely candidate for liquid water given Pluto's elliptical orbit. This is important because it tells us what we can expect to find in other places around the solar system, said Jeff Moore, leader of the New Horizons Geology, Geophysics, and Imaging team at NASA's Ames Research Center. The Pluto system may be a dwarf planet, but it gives us some clues about other planets like Mars. Pluto has been known since 1930 as an object with craters, in fact, there were even some photographs taken by early spacecraft that seemed to show Pluto's surface covered by them. But upon closer inspection with New Horizons telescopic cameras and near-infrared mapping spectrometer, researchers found that there were significantly fewer craters than expected given its age, 4 billion years old, and location near Neptune's orbit, which can produce frequent impacts. While Pluto's surface is covered in ice, it's constantly being bombarded by comets and other objects. This means that the surface of Pluto is constantly being resurfaced, creating new landforms at a rate determined by its size and temperature. Another data that we rescued was the presence of dark material in some areas on both bodies. This material could be organic compounds, a type of ice, or a combination of rock and ice. It also provides scientists with another clue as to what Pluto looks like under its crust. Craters form when a piece of space debris hits a planet or moon, leaving behind a depression on the surface. For example, the moon has millions of craters from billions of years worth of impacts. However, we were surprised to see how many craters there are on Pluto's surface, more than we would expect for such an old body. New Horizons scientists think this may be due to its location in the Kuiper Belt and its proximity to Neptune's gravitational field which meant that it was bombarded with more debris than other objects in this region. As a result, many impact events occurred within just 1 billion years or so after formation, far earlier than thought. 
In addition to these cratering features, we also see ridges, long lines, and troughs, long lines with steep slopes. These features could have been caused by glaciers flowing across the surface toward low points over time or perhaps due to convection currents within an underground ocean that brought warmer material closer towards colder regions, where they froze into ice sheets like those found on Earth today that move slowly over landmasses, creating patterns similar to those seen here on Pluto today. There are many mysteries surrounding Pluto that will be revealed in the coming months. The first photos from New Horizons have shown us that Pluto has mountains, valleys, and plains on its surface. It also appears to have a thin atmosphere of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane. It is possible that this atmosphere may have been created when Pluto came too close to Neptune's gravity in its orbit around the Sun thousands of years ago, however, we don't know for sure yet. Pluto, the former planet, is a very interesting place. It has many moons, and it's home to a lot of craters. The surface of Pluto is very different from Earth's because there are no oceans or landmasses. Instead, it's mostly covered in ice. Pluto's surface is incredibly varied, with bright snowy mountains and darker areas. The moons are also thought to have some water ice. Researchers think that this is a good thing because it could be a source of water for future missions. It may also be possible to use the water ice to make fuel for the spacecraft. If you have a bottle of water, you can test whether it's frozen. Just bang the cap on top of your hand and see if it hurts. If it hurts, then the water is most likely solid. Now try banging a chunk of frozen nitrogen, also called cryopermafrost, against your hand, it won't hurt. That's because frozen nitrogen is made up of lots of hydrogen-bonded molecules that are tightly packed and crystallized together in solid form, so each molecule is like an ice cube in shape and density. As such, when you hit one with something hard enough to break through those bonds between molecules, like hitting a baseball ball, it feels less painful than hitting a ball made out of liquid water because there aren't as many loose parts moving around inside the frozen material as there would be inside regular old H2O. There are other materials besides nitrogen present at Pluto's surface too, methane ice, carbon monoxide ice, even carbon dioxide ice. All these different types of solids can give rise to different types of shapes for mountains or mountain ranges like those found across both Sputnik Planum, where New Horizons landed, and Hilary Montes, which we photographed during our flyby. These are just some of the things we've learned about Pluto in just a few days and, we still have a lot to learn. But these new images provide a glimpse into what we may discover as the spacecraft approaches its target. I think this is exciting because it shows us how much there is still left to explore in our solar system, even after all these years. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and let us know what you thought of the Pluto surface in the comment box. This was Interspace, see you in the next video.